As you may have known, when working on the Arch Bass vs Debian Bass video, we wanted to include the Manjaro KDE version in the story, but simply we were not able to install it neither in VirtualBox nor on actual hardware. But we did not want to surrender that easily, so despite still not being able to see its cursor for instance, we somehow managed to install Manjaro KDE on one of our laptops recently. And after using it for about a month, this is what we have learned so far. Manjaro KDE offers a Windows-like desktop layout. There's a panel at the bottom of the screen. In its right-hand corner there are usual suspects, such as calendar, status and notifications, networks, microphone, disk and devices, Bluetooth, volume and so on. On the left-hand side of the panel you'll find your system settings app, which is maybe the most comprehensive settings app in the Linux world. There you can spend days customizing the system. Further left, some apps are pinned to the panel, including those that we have pinned ourselves, like LibreOffice Writer, Photo Editor, Audio Editors, Web Browsers and so on. Dolphin is Manjaro's default file manager. Manjaro KDE brings in a very nice way of switching workspaces, which makes your multitasking even easier. Speaking of multitasking, Manjaro KDE also enables a user to instantly see which apps are open by dragging your cursor in the very top left hand side corner of your screen. This will show all of your currently open apps. On the very left hand side of the screen there's the KDE's default start menu. Even novice users will find it easy to work with and very familiar, in our opinion. Software categories are on the left hand side of the menu, while all of your apps are on the right hand side. Another important aspect of Manjaro KDE is that it offers a working desktop. Right click on it and you'll get many familiar options, like creating new folders or files. There you can also enter the edit mode, where you can customize your desktop to your heart's content. Since this is a KDE desktop, you can add many widgets to your desktop to make it more functional and pretty. The default software manager in Manjaro KDE is Pamac, and not KDE's usual Discover. It allows a user to install software from many sources, apart from the official repositories, such as Arch user repository, Flatpak or Snap platforms. Pamac is, in our opinion, very easy to work with and it's rather self-explanatory. Those sources enabled us to install many diverse programs. For instance, the XNView MP Photo Editor we did not have to download from their website this time around. Simply because we found it in the Art User Repository, which we previously enabled in the Pamac Software Manager. The same is with the Chrome Web Browser, we found it in the AUR2. Our favorite video editor, Kden Live, was installed as an app image. Manjaro KDE actually makes it very easy to integrate app images into the system. It's done via App Image Launcher Settings, an app that is automatically offered. You just need to select a folder where you will store your app images to. This is how we installed only Office 2, via App Image Format. And finally, the default terminal app in Manjaro KDE is Console. Of course, as an operating system featuring a KDE Plasma desktop environment, Manjaro KDE offers a simple but powerful way of customizing your desktop. You can simply right-click on your desktop and choose the option to change your wallpaper. 
Manjaro KDE is preloaded with many excellent wallpapers you can choose from. There's really no need to wander around the internet to get a nice image for your desktop. If this is not enough for you, you can even get new wallpapers without the need to open your web browser. To change the default theme of your desktop in Manjaro KDE is as easy as it gets. You just open the Manjaro KDE's system settings, where you can choose another global theme among those already on offer. Or if you don't think that's enough, then you can get new themes. Art-based Linux distros are often said to break systems after the update process. We have been using Manjaro KDE for several weeks now, and we haven't had a single issue so far. For the video, we have recorded one of the updates we had along the way, and everything was going smoothly. After downloading and installing updates, the system required a restart for the changes to take effect and after the restart, the system was working as it was supposed to. Still, not everything has gone smoothly and easily. Former Windows users should be prepared for a little bit different behavior compared to what they are used to. For instance, Manjaro KDE's file manager. It works somewhat differently from what former Windows users are accustomed to. If you open a folder within your home folder, and when you close the file manager, once when you open it again, it will open where you last closed it, and not at its default position. This is a behavior not seen in the proprietary operating system, where you open its file manager, then open a folder within the home folder, but when you close it, it will start afresh. It really takes some time to get used to it, at least in our case. Also, we've had an issue with plugging USB devices. We don't know about you, but again, in our case, when we first plug in a USB device, it's automatically recognized and open. But after the procedure of safely removing the flash drive, the next time we plug it in, it's not recognized by the disk and devices applet but the drive can be found unmounted in the file manager. We need to mount it and then safely remove it manually. All in all, our overall experience with Manjaro KDE was a pleasant one, and we would definitely recommend it as a viable alternative to proprietary operating systems. It's not perfect, of course, but we should not forget that Manjaro KDE is a free and open source operating system after all. What's your opinion on Manjaro KDE? Tell us in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching the video and see you next time.